Welcome to the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel, where we bring you videos on installation, maintenance, and various trainings on oxygen equipment and devices. If you have comments and or questions, drop them in the comment section below or write to us info at oxygenalliance.org. Remember to like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. Hello and welcome. My name is Victor Nzembe, a biomedical engineer with the Oxygen Alliance. Today, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step demonstration on how to perform various alarm tests on an Uivacare Perfect Oxygen Concentrator. We have already made a teardown video of this Oxygen Concentrator and you can find the link in the description below. Like any other Oxygen Concentrator, this Oxygen Concentrator is equipped with an alarm system. Ensuring that the alarms are functioning correctly is crucial as they indicate the performance and safety status of the device. If the alarms are not functioning correctly, critical issues may go undetected. For example, if there is high pressure within the system, the high pressure alarm is supposed to activate. In this video, I will demonstrate five essential alarm tests that you can do to verify that the alarm system is functioning properly and ensure that the device is safe and reliable for clinical use. Firstly, I will demonstrate the power loss alarm test. The power loss alarm is designed to alert the user that the concentrator is not receiving electrical power. In the event of an abrupt power failure, the alarm should activate to notify the user that the device is no longer functioning. To test the functionality of the power loss alarm, you will first need to simulate no power conditions. Firstly, you will need to connect the machine to a power source. Note that this oxygen concentrator operates 120 volts AC. In this case, I will use a variable transformer because the voltage from the main supply is 230 volts AC. Then I will go ahead and switch the output voltage to 120 volts AC. To continue checking for the power loss alarm, you need to cut power to the oxygen concentrator. You can do that by either unplugging the power cord of the oxygen concentrator or just switching off the variable transformer. An audible alarm should activate immediately or within 30 seconds. In this case, I will just switch off the variable transformer. As you can hear, a beeping alarm has been activated to signify that no power is being supplied to the oxygen concentrator. If the alarm does not activate with the power cut off and the unit still turned on, it means that the battery free alarm circuit is drained. Under normal conditions, the circuit should automatically recharge once power is restored and the unit is turned on. Next, I will demonstrate how you can perform the low pressure alarm test. This oxygen concentrator is designed to deliver oxygen at 5 psi. It has a preset lower product tank pressure of 7 psi. If the pressure in the product tank goes below 7 psi, an audible alarm should activate, signifying that low pressure conditions have been detected within the system. For this test, I will first need to open the unit, so I will have to remove the covers. To simulate low pressure conditions, first rate, I will power the oxygen concentrator using the variable transformer as I earlier mentioned. 
After doing that, I will set the flow rate to the maximum, which is 5 liters per minute. Moving forward, I will have to create a leak within the system, especially on the product tank. And to do that, I will disconnect the tubing going to the pressure transducer. This is the tubing going to the pressure transducer. Disconnecting this tubing will create a leak on the product tank. As you can hear, the moment I disconnected this tubing, a continuous audible alarm activated. This is because the system is detecting a pressure which is lower than the preset value of 7 psi. At the same time, the compressor also automatically shut down the moment I disconnected this tubing. This is done to protect the system and prevent further damage. The continuous audible alarm is also accompanied by a LED service indicator light. Another test that we can perform is the high pressure alarm test. The high pressure alarm is designed to alert the user if the system is detecting rising pressure. For example, if the pressure in the product tank rises above 23 psi with a tolerance of plus or minus 1 psi. To verify the functionality of the high pressure alarm, first way I will turn on the unit and set the flow to the maximum rated flow rate. Next, I will simulate high pressure conditions within the system. To do this, I will disconnect the cable supplying power to the pilot operated four way sonoid valve. So I will disconnect this in line connector. Disconnecting this power cable causes main valve coil failure. As a result, air cannot move into or out of the seal beds. This will cause pressure build up in lines before the seal beds or the compressor. Under these conditions, the compressor will automatically shut down. This is done to protect the system from operating against the high pressure. The continuous audible alarm is also accompanied by a LED service indicator light. Another test that you can perform is the timeout alarm test. The timeout alarm is designed to alert the user if the oxygen concentrator is not producing at least 85% oxygen concentration 5 minutes after switching it on. To verify the functionality of the timeout alarm, you can isolate the air compressor from the system. To do that, I will disconnect the power cable supplying power to the compressor. Now, I will turn on the oxygen concentrator. After doing that, an audible alarm should activate within 40 seconds. As you can hear, a continuous audible alarm has been activated. This is because no compressed air is being sent from the compressor to the sieve beds for oxygen generation. The continuous audible alarm is also accompanied by a LED service indicator light. This is because the system is detecting oxygen purity below 
Now, let us look at how you can perform the pressure equalization valve coil test. This test is done to check if the system properly detects a failure in the pressure equalization valve coil or its associated circuitry. A malfunction of the valve prevents proper venting during the PSA cycle. To do this test, start by making sure that the oxygen concentrator is powered on and set to 5 liters per minute. After doing that, locate the two yellow cables going to the pressure equalization valve. These are the two yellow cables. Next, you have to disconnect one of these cables to simulate a pressure equalization valve coil failure. A continuous audible alarm was activated the moment I disconnected this power cable. This indicates that the system is detecting a malfunction within the electrical circuit of the pressure equalization valve coil. At the same time, the compressor also automatically shut down. The continuous audible alarm is also accompanied by a LED indicator light. After performing these tests, any failure would indicate a problem with the concentrators, alarm, and monitoring systems. This could be due to faulty sensors, malfunctioning alarm modules, or a damaged printed circuit board. Such failures compromise the device's ability to alert users to critical conditions. That is all I had for you today. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have learned something new. Bye.